Mass Effect Andromeda posed an interesting research opportunity for game graphics, and so we set forth benchmarking the game with our updated GPU test bench and about 14 video cards. We'll be defining some of the game's graphics settings in this video and talking about performance issues that influence test results and how to avoid them. And also, we'll be going over GP performance at 4K, 1440, and 1080p resolutions. Before getting to that, this video is brought to you by EVGA's GTX 1080 and 1070 Hybrid Cooling Kit, which we recently used to hack together our 1080 Ti FE Hybrid mod. The kit offers an efficient way to adapt compatible GPUs to better cooling performance and allow some more headroom out of the cores. Link below for more information. Mass Effect Andromeda had a couple of interesting options in the graphics settings menu. One of them in particular stands out that we wanted to go over just to clarify for everyone, and that is frame buffer format. It's under display settings. We'll be going over that, and then afterwards, we'll be walking through some of the research that was conducted on Andromeda prior to running the full benchmark suite. This is stuff that we've wanted to start publishing so you can get a better idea of frame times, of specific performance issues or anomalies, and this is kind of new, how the game performs in different areas of the game. That's pretty cool because we normally don't have that information, and thanks to our Patreon backers and Discord, we were able to get multiple save game files to put it all together. Frame buffer format offers two different settings, half 16 and compressed. Speaking with technical artists at the company, we learned that half 16 doubles the size of all color buffers in the rendering pipeline, so more bandwidth is needed during rendering. It also doubles the precision of the intermediate color buffers and is something that won't be visibly noticed on standard displays. That is what most of us have. Considering the performance hit though, half 16 is generally not worth it for users and so is something we disabled in our testing. As for compressed mode, that one keeps five to six bits of precision per color channel, but doesn't have artifacts of 16 bit color because the rest of the 32 bits are used on range. It's possible that you'll see some color banding issues in places with SDR, but should be uncommon. Bright skies, for example, can cause some exposure issues, sort of like ENB mods, but it's otherwise better than the performance hit of half 16. HDR, however, stretches range and precision, and that's where you'd probably want half 16 instead because you'll start noticing color banding otherwise. As always with our game benchmarking, we started with analysis of how the game performs in different options, configurations, or in this case, different places in the game. So that would include planet side testing, uh, testing on Tempest, testing on the Nexus, things like that, and looking at the data for all of them to figure out where makes the most sense for our benchmark course so that we can most accurately represent the game as you'll most likely be experiencing it, whether that's a worst case scenario or a best case scenario or somewhere in between. So we have some of that information for you. A big shout out to our Patreon Discord members for sending over save game files to accelerate that process. And most immediately important before all that, we noticed that just like Battlefield 1, the first test pass of Mass Effect Andromeda has some interesting variants. It happens on both AMD and NVIDIA, but the performance hit is the biggest with AMD. And so we have some data on that and how we've elected to resolve those issues for our benchmarking. This first set of several test passes with an R9 Fury X at 4K and Ultra settings shows some of the variants that we're talking about. The important thing here is the disparity in frame times. This is repeatable and seems to happen consistently on first load of a level, but goes away after exploring the immediate area. You can see in this frame time chart that we're seeing massive noticeable stutters in the first pass of testing, but significant performance improvement in subsequent passes like pass two in this case. The most exaggerated spike in this instance is a 280 millisecond frame time at one point, which means that you're standing around for about a quarter of a second waiting for the next frame. That is noticeable. To further illustrate, here's a set of data, just a raw data table from our RX 480 8GB Gaming X at 1080p Ultra. In this one, our first test pass shows 72 FPS average with 56 FPS 1% low and 6 FPS 0.1% lows. This shows itself in stutters during the first pass, but it smooths out in subsequent testing within about a minute normally, and after walking through the area and loading everything into memory or VRAM as necessary. We improve from roughly 6 FPS 0.1% lowest performance to 53 in the second pass. Massive difference here. And to contrast this versus Nvidia, the GTX 1066 Gigabyte Gaming X at 1080p Ultra posts a 60 FPS 0.1% low output for the first pass, then 65 for later passes, and we also see a difference in averages. 
The difference here isn't visible and isn't anywhere near what we were seeing with AMD, but it is consistent and measurable. So this is obviously some sort of issue with Mass Effect Andromeda, though it is exaggerated on AMD. And just to be very clear here, we're not saying that AMD is worse overall, nothing like that. What we are saying though, is that this is something to keep in mind because you might see stuttering as you immediately load a level, but it should mostly go away as you start playing that level. This is particularly noticeable on the planets where you're probably going to be on the planet for a long period of time. So it's not a huge issue after you immediately load the area surrounding your character. That said, it does mean that we have some considerations for testing. Namely, do we include the first pass in the data and average it, which would really bring down the 1% 0.1% low is mostly 0.1% on AMD hardware in a way that would make it look a lot worse than Nvidia, or do we get rid of the data? So we did what we did with Battlefield 1 testing, which is run a minimum of four test passes per card per resolution, and then we're eliminating the first test pass. That means that the AMD data will be more consistent because we're eliminating that sort of outlier, although it is repeatable, in the first test pass. So what that means is looking through the data, what you are seeing is the latter, the later three test passes, and we've eliminated the first one for all cards. That also means that you're seeing numbers that are more immediately comparable, so it should be fairer in that regard, but keep in mind that there is a potential stutter there that we're not showing, but you've seen it now in our research piece, so that should give everyone even ground to understand where the different cards are. Anyway, we're assuming here that there's some sort of driver level or game level optimization issue. And given that this was an NVIDIA partnered game, it's possible that there's still some work to be done on AMD devices by either AMD or by BioWare. As for other research, we ran several test passes that lasted a few minutes for the first planet, for the Tempest, and for the Nexus zones. Overall, performance numbers suggest that planet-side driving is the highest performance, no surprise there, as it is the least geometrically complex, while planet-side battles tend to mostly equal the average frame rate of the Tempest or of the Nexus zone. The Tempest ship has consistently the lowest frame throughput, but overall, all test environments are roughly equal when you average the frame rate output over a long period of time, a couple of minutes, which benchmarking is a pretty long time, and so because we can see that the averages mostly align, it doesn't matter a whole lot where we benchmark as long as it is not in the open driving areas of a planet because that's when we see frame rates that are uh, at least a couple percent, if not 10% or higher, more than what we see on Tempest and Nexus or in Battle's planet side. Because of this, we decided to run our tests on Nexus. The Nexus seems to be the most representative of overall average performance when considering lower frame rate battles and higher frame rate desert driving and mixed frame rate ship or station traversal all sort of land at around the same place for average and frame time performance. Having defined the interesting discoveries, let's get into the benchmark charts for 4K, 1440, and 1080p. Note that as always, the full testing methodology is linked in the description below along with the rest of the analysis from this piece. If you are curious how we tested something, what drivers we used, what specific versions of cards we used, it's all defined in that article. So check that first. Uh, just to quickly note on drivers, they were the latest at time of benchmarking, which was official supported drivers from Nvidia and from AMD. So those drivers were the ones released by both video card vendors specifically for Mass Effect Andromeda. That's what we used. You can find the specific numbers in that article. At 4K Ultra and the Nexus Benchmark, our 1080 Ti hybrid we built is performing around 65 FPS average with 1% lows at 54 and 0.1% at 50. Moving down the list, the 1080 FTW2 from EVGA runs about 20% slower than the 1080 Ti at 52 FPS average with lows about 10 FPS below the 1080 Ti's 1% and 0.1% values. This is still plenty playable even at Ultra as we generally found that Mass Effect Andromeda feels fluid enough for play at around the 50 FPS range. Your mileage may vary depending on how picky you are about frame rates, but that's what we thought based on how this game plays and feels at 50 FPS or higher. The GTX 980 Ti hybrid from the Maxwell generation runs about 39% slower than the Pascal 1080 Ti, placing at 40 FPS average with lows just above 30 FPS. We can find AMD's R9 Fury X at 32 average with lows in the 20s. At this point, alongside the 1070 at 38 FPS, we're beginning to experience more frequent and observable stutters or tears. The experience is poor enough on the Fury X, the 1070, and potentially the 980 Ti that we'd recommend dropping to medium settings instead of ultra. 
One note here, there's really not much of a performance benefit by going to high as it turns out in our test course. So it's really ultra, medium, or bust on 4K. For what it's worth, the MSI RX 480 Gaming X 8GB card hands on pretty closely to the Fury X at 25 FPS average, tying the 390X and outpacing both the former flagships from both AMD and Nvidia, the 290X and the 780Ti. Moving on to 1440p Ultra with the same Nexus workload, the 1080Ti GN Hybrid operates about two times its frame rate as at 4K, now pushing 126 FPS average. That's with the lows at 90 FPS 1% and 79 FPS 0.1%. The 1080 FTW2 trails at 101 FPS average, making the 1080 Ti roughly 25% faster at this resolution. That's not quite Nvidia's 35% faster claim, though the gap between the 980 Ti and the 1080 Ti is a noteworthy 60% improvement from the Pascal Ti. The GTX 1060 Gaming X 6GB card now appears on this chart as well, placing at around 58 FPS average with lows at 47 and 46. And these R9 Fury X has nearly identical performance across the board at 58 average, 47 1% low, and 44 0.1% lows. Both the AMD Fury X and Nvidia 1060 output frames with fairly even frame pacing, which is somewhat remarkable for a newly launched title. We don't always see that performance regardless of vendor. The EVGA GTX 970 SSC runs about 10% slower than the 1060, but is still playable with ultra settings. This is followed closely by the RX 480, which in this current state of the game, seems to perform about where the GTX 970 and R9 390X perform. Interestingly, we see both former flagships continue to exhibit their weaknesses in higher resolutions with the 780Ti and 290X falling below the modern RX 480 and the GTX 1060 in frame rate at 1440p. These two cards perform more closely to an RX 470 4GB card. Dropping any of the three tailing devices to medium settings would push you to 50 FPS if you preferred 1440p to the higher settings. Moving now to the most widespread resolution, 1080p posts the 1080Ti nearing 200 FPS average, the 980Ti at around 120 average, and the 1070 tied with the 980Ti. Everything here, even the worst performing devices, have tightly timed frame pacing, which makes for a generally smooth experience if above roughly 50 FPS average. The GTX 780Ti and R9 290X do a lot better here thanks to the lowered pixel throughput, which is something that these cards were more built for. And the 290X lands a few frames ahead of the GTX 780Ti from the Kepler generation. That said, Nvidia holds the top half of the chart, at least until AMD pushes its highly anticipated Vega GPU of the same name architecture, as the currently best performing AMD card is the Fury X at 82 FPS average, which is trailed about 8% by the RX 480 Gaming X, and then that is followed closely by the R9 390X. As for low-end cards, the 1050 does reasonably here, though dropping to medium settings would be ideal. The GTX 1050 Ti would do fine, but we didn't test it due to the usual time and origin activation restrictions. The RX 460 2 gigabyte card struggles and definitely needs a settings reduction for better playability. For 1080p and ultra settings, it seems that Mass Effect Andromeda runs playably on something like a GTX 1050 Ti and up, just extrapolating, or an RX 470 and up. That's the 4 gigabyte model with the 470 offering about a 60 FPS average throughput at the bottom end. And then if you look to things like the GTX 1060 or RX 480, we begin to exceed that 60 FPS mark with a 1060 pushing nearly 100 FPS. It's in the 90s or somewhere around there. And that is also capable of 1440p playability to some extent, though you may want a slight settings reduction depending on how much of a stickler you are for 60 FPS gaming. The same is true for the Fury X Haneron. That card tends to perform around where the 1060 is in some of these charts, depending on the workload and resolution again. As for 4K, it's looking like 1080 class hardware is required for this game if you want to play on Ultra at 4K, though you could take the settings hit and get some other cards up to playability if you determine 50 FPS as playability for this title. Your mileage may vary on that. And then finally, we noticed that the difference again between High and Ultra is negligible. So. Uh, between AMD and Nvidia, it was never more than a few percentage points, which tended to be a couple of frames difference at best. And that was with the Nexus and the Tempest workloads. So it's mostly an option of ultra versus medium for this game with uh, potentially low if you're running something like an RX 460 or a GTX 1050 as an option.
as well. So as always, the article is in the link in the description below, patreon.com slash gamersnexus to help us out directly. Subscribe for more. Thanks for watching. I'll see you all next time.